Hey, this is Josh. Welcome to my garage. Today I'm doing a DIY upgrade that only cost me $150, but could save me from destroying a $20,000 engine. Sadly, I'm no stranger to loss, and my LS7 dropped an exhaust valve at the racetrack last year, which cracked my block. For a replacement, I'm starting with a beautiful 7 liter k -Tech short block that should be capable of 700 naturally aspirated crank horsepower, more than enough to go out and kill GT3s. But peak horsepower is not my top priority. At this point in my life, I care a lot more about reliability. Obviously, this time around, I won't be using stock cylinder heads, but the exhaust valves are not the only weak point on the LS7. Last time we addressed oiling issues by installing an improved racing oil pan baffle, windage tray, and crank scraper. But before I can really start my engine build in earnest, I'm going to install a rocker arm trunnion upgrade from Brian Tooley Racing. My expert friend Dr. Bobby is back to lend a hand today. Let's get started. It is great having you back in the garage with me, and as usual, you have been an integral part of this project. Today we are shouting out Mr. Carbon Fiber 8071 who advised that maybe it's not the best idea to leave my garage doors open while I've got my engine's internals exposed. So even though the weather has been amazing, I'll try to keep the doors closed and a prophylactic garbage bag on the engine when it's not being worked on. I chose the TK002 kit from Brian Tooley Racing, and I also picked up an Arbor Press from Harbor Freight. A shop press should do the job, but would probably take a lot longer. We're going to reuse the old rocker arms, so we'll have to pull them off the old cylinder heads. Be careful with this. I mm -hmm. don't know if you got a new one. Mm -mm. This is a coolant temp sensor. Take that out. Don't lose the little crush washer. Oh, you rounded it. Already screwing things up at the outset, not a good sign. A tip from Dr. Bobby, using vice grips and the hex wrench at the same time made it easy to get this stripped plug out. Look at that. And with those parts neatly bagged, it's time to get the rocker arms off of the heads. It's hard not to look back and wonder how life would be different if I'd just gotten my heads fixed when I bought the car. But there's no use crying over spilt milk, as they say. I've blown up so many things that I think about it every time now. Even Dr. Bobby wasn't born knowing everything about engines. The rocker arms serve as the pivot point between your push rods and your valves, and the stock roller bearings are press fit into place with nothing that would capture them if a bearing were to pop out. I don't know how common that type of failure is, but my mindset with this build is reliability above all else. Put that on the gun pile. The first step is pressing out all of the old bearings. Just as you start to get the technique down, it's time to never do it again. That's why I have so much respect for guys who are really, really good at this stuff, because they make it look like nothing. You know? Oh yeah. No? Mm -mm. Um, Tap it. I say, with the hammer? I say so, yeah. Now that's a little puny, but okay. I'm it's not the size of the hammer, Bobby. It's how you swing it. I must be hanging out with Bobby too much because I am regressing to fourth grade humor. Luckily, my low grade OCD appears to be in full effect. All right, Dr. Bobby. Uh oh. Josh Van Veld's phone. This is Josh Van Veld. How can I help you? And the only real surprise with this project is that it took about four times longer than we expected. Given how long things were taking, I decided to get a little head start before Bobby showed up for the next session. The next step is to press the new bearings into the old rocker arms. That all went pretty smoothly until I got one of them wrong and broke a bearing while pressing it in. Luckily, they did send an extra bearing, but I needed to carefully press the broken one out first. And now that I knew I was capable of breaking a bearing, the pressure was on to get the last one in correctly. Thankfully, that one did go smoothly. This created a wonderful opportunity to play a little prank on Bobby when he showed up to help later. We uh, got a little bit of a problem. Okay. You blew one out. Yeah. 
They don't send any extras. Because we got the captive washers, mm -hmm. how would you feel about we just shove this sucker back in there, squeeze that down? No. <laughs> they send you 33. So I already fixed it. Oh, <laughs> so they, they're like, give you, a, give you an out, okay. Yeah. I think the litmus test of a good prank is if your subject is laughing at the end, so mission accomplished. The last step with this trunnion upgrade is also the worst. It's installing snap rings on the washers that contain the bearings. And I guess snap rings require some technique because Bobby is good at it and I absolutely suck. But even though it made it take three times as long, I insisted on installing the snap rings myself. Until I ruined two of them and we were in danger of not being able to finish, then Dr. Bobby had to step in. And we got it done. This trunnion upgrade is kind of an appetizer for the full engine build. I've realized everything is taking longer than expected and I absolutely need to get this done. So make sure you're subscribed because the next one is going to be an epic undertaking for an amateur like me. We're going to get this beast fully assembled. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Make sure you give Bobby some love in the comments. We'll see you next time.